All right, we're back. On this one, we're gonna be talking about the fixture I use on uh, Piranha Utility Blades and titanium. All right, let's talk about it. First of all, I wanted to say thanks to anyone who's liked, commented, uh, purchased from, you know, my company, Vice Hardware. I appreciate you. You are the reason I get to do this. And just, man, I can't thank you enough. Appreciate you. So, yeah, this is one of the products. It's called the Piranha. It's a, uh, like a box cutter, uh, utility blade. It's... This one, this particular one is a uh, titanium one. We do them in brass and brass, titanium, and aluminum. And I just want to show you one of the fixtures, or both the fixtures we use for uh, the parts. And uh, some of the struggles I was having on this part, because it's so small, it's weird, it's just not something uh, that's very vice friendly uh, so I, I, I made a small palette and I, I originally designed the fixture with uh, mighty bites the the hex the hex yeah that mighty bite fixture used um, these things I'm sure you guys are familiar with them they work on a cam system but the problem I was having with those is I've actually never had much success for these with these these things are so awesome, but I'm always clamping on so little of material. It never works out for me because I'm always like on half, like half the uh, the um, brass hexagon here. It always kicks the part up and it throws it off. Uh, it just doesn't lay flat and then the part flies off. Yeah, so that fixture I designed using these was a complete disaster um it just it just didn't go good but uh i was like well what if i could use that same concept with the cam because it should hold good right i just need a tiny little vice that fits it like a glove just like you do some soft foot jaws or something it's basically what i got going on it's just mini soft jaws but on a palette so um yeah let me show you so this is one of the uh, Piranha fixtures. As you can see, there's the cam. And uh, I got some sh uh, some shim stock in there because uh, I actually made these holes a little bit too big and sometimes, depending on the laser cut, it's not tight enough in there. And sometimes, in, you know, this is aluminum so it's soft and the, the steel is, you know, gonna push on that. And if you're not familiar with the Piranha, this is what it looks like. This is an all titanium one and yeah, I've beat this one up over the, uh, like a year and, um, yeah, man, titanium looks real nice. Yeah. So I just wasn't having luck with this system right here. Cause I was always like half on half off like that and it was kicking my part up. So. Obviously, that's no good. It wasn't setting flat. So, I decided to make some of these jaws that slid and just grip the part. Uh, yeah, so I just stuck that cam in there. And this. And some screws right here, I would put. And they pull it to the table. But I don't tighten them. And they're, pretty, they're loose, but it still pulls this to the table. Because, you know, this still wants to kick up. But uh, yeah, that's that's something I came up with that I, I was fighting using these. And uh, yeah, that's what I came up with. It it works really well. It holds it super tight. I was buying blocks of aluminum to do this and I found that I could have these pre-cut uh, pre pieces for like the same price. So maybe you guys are working on something that you can find a vendor to do that. and save you all that machine time in the center and around all that crap. 
All right, so this was the original gangster using the Mighty Bite. And I was going to have three of those along the bottom. I could have been fine with two, I, I believe, it, if it actually worked. But uh, that's how I'd clamp my stock, and then I would flip it and do the other part. But that's the one I had said was an epic fail. And I did all this in SolidWorks, and then uh, I moved it over to uh, a Fusion 360 to do my KM. Yes, yeah, something told me I should probably do like a mini version of it just to test it. And I'm glad I did because it was an epic failure. Um, it, it It's in the uh, box of dead fixtures and sample parts and all that stuff that I'm sure everyone has. But uh, yeah, that test, it allowed me to, you know, save a pallet and everything and not waste that and worry about all that. But that that little cam system using that screw is ultimately what I use and it uh, works out real well. May. All right, let's talk grade two, grade five titanium. And while we chose to, uh, to stay with the grade two titanium on our titanium wallets. So this is the F22 all titanium wallet. It's a complete gangster. Uh, it's all made out of grade two. And the reason we do that, if you're familiar with machining titanium, is grade five is a nightmare to machine, in my experience. Uh, and you know, no one funds this project but me. So when if you're smoking tools and wearing through stuff like that, you it's a steep learning curve. So, um, you know, I started machining everything out of grade two, and it's just, grade two is actually nice to machine. Um, it, it's just, I really like the grade two material. Um, yeah, so that's what, why we roll with that. All our tools and, you know, that we're machining back here in this DT, they're all so small, man. We're using 16, you know, 16th of an inch in mills, a lot of eighth inch in mills, and I think the biggest, uh, I think, yeah, it's all tiny tooling. So that grade five is, is can be a nightmare. And you know, we're thread milling the hole, so that's super, super tiny. And yeah, that's why we do that. Tell me your experience with titanium. You, you prefer machining grade five, grade two. What do you prefer? Because, um, my experience is just those two, and that's why we do that. But in other things, like certain tools I've made, pry bars and such in the past, that need, you know, uh, that need to be a harder material is always grade five. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Like I said earlier, I appreciate all y'all. And, uh, man, if you're on this journey, man. keep pushing, keep digging. You got this. Let's go. S -I -O